Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. It's Wednesday, March 6th, 2013. I'm Darko. My YouTube channels are DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. I usually post the links in YouTube's video description, so check them out. All right, um, this first article I have up was, I believe it was originally aired on CNN. It was uh, referred to me by, uh, by someone else. And they're just actually kind of becoming aware of all of this stuff. So it, it can always be a lot, you know, at first, almost too much. And they saw this and they were just like, oh, my God, you know, because they, they think that when you're uh, like someone like myself, it's just, I mean, I don't think I'm a kook, but, uh, you know, some of the things are not really politically correct. Uh, for most people. So they saw this and they just saw exactly how obvious it was. Anti-government extremist groups reach record levels, say experts. So uh, the number of American patriot, they put in quote, patriot extremist groups. That's basically to call it, if you're a patriot, you're a terrorist. This is very subliminal stuff here, uh, trust me. Uh, has reached a record level according to a new study and experts are aware, warning, it's warning of a wave of anti-government violence. So a report released Tuesday by the Southern Poverty Law Center, Zionist, counted 1,300 patriot extremist groups in 2012, up by 7% from 2011. The study defines patriot groups as anti-government militias, which is, doesn't make sense. It's like the sovereign citizen term. They're not citizens, so how could you call them a sovereign citizen? They're sovereign entities. Uh, patriot groups, how could a group that loves their country and wants to defend the rights and principles of it be anti-government. Well, no, they're anti-Zionist occupied government. See, they're not going to say that, though. It says these uh, study defines patriot groups as anti-government militias driven by their fear that authorities will strip them of their guns and liberties. So this narrative is actually played out. I've mentioned this before in alternative sites, uh, one of them Infowars. Uh, not bashing them, they help me, uh, quote, wake up, which I think is just another uh, a buzz term uh, as far as like uh, a premature, as I say, was it premature kundalini activation? Kind of uh, sounds uh, new ages, but I do believe that you can be prematurely activated uh, to, to too much information at one time. I think that's what it was all about, and especially when it's based in fear and they never point out the real culprit. So... Uh, one of the things is like you'll see Ron Paul being interviewed on there saying, oh, they're coming for our guns, you know, they're coming for our guns, and they want to give this illusion that they're going to come for your guns. Now, maybe they will, right? But uh, they're more likely to just make it so that their guns are far superior to your pitchforks, uh, rifles, and uh, or they'll just make ammunition scarce, which they're already starting to do, so keep an eye out for that. But it's the illusion that they want people to revolt. They want people to get into a bloody revolution. So the article goes on and says they believe the Constitution is being raped with hate groups. Things are going to get worse because they feel like they're in a battle, says a former FBI informant who spent time undercover with various militia and extremist groups. It's not surprising with their hatred of Barack Obama that there are even more hate groups out there. And, I, you know, that's the thing. I, he was put there. I said this in 2008 uh, to people that he was put there specifically, even though he's not. He's probably more white than he is black. Um, that what? That he was put there so that when 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 white Christians uh, come out and 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 different, you don't even have to be white Christian. There's there's black Christians. There's all kinds of different groups, um, and they start talking about the federal government going crazy or whatever. They'll say, oh well, you just don't like it because you're because there's a black president and you're a homophobe and you're afraid. Uh, you're just a conspiracy theorist, right? Says so the study in California uh, said that California has. Well, the study wasn't in California, but the study said California has the most patriot extremist groups with 81. Uh, I know Michigan's out there. The number of immigrant bashing extremist groups, so the so-called uh, nativism organizations, is way down from 2000 and fallen by 88%. So there's really only a few things that the president does, uh, you know, is responsible for doing uh, besides uh, basically signing off what Congress hands him, um, ish, you know, appointing a cabinet, uh, you know, being responsible for the currency, which is kind of messed up still, but also borders, right? Immigration policies and that. So the new statistics come after a string of crimes linked to extremist groups, and they go on there and talk about this, the uh, Michigan militia, 
uh, again, that was FBI infiltrated, probably set up. And they go through different uh, different groups. Oh yeah, the Sikh temple shooting, which was actually uh, what people don't understand. They blame it. There's these things like the swastikas down in Florida that I just covered that they blamed on white supremacists. Uh, but there's actually different types of uh, religions out there in, uh, in Islam and in India um, that will put these swastikas up and uh, attack uh, different sects of, of Muslims. Uh, so they go in there and it says that it's dubious to assume growth in numbers is relative to violence, saying that it's unfair to uh, lump these different groups and painting them all as potentially violent, which they'd like to do. Oh, then they get down to the fringe elements, and um, they say that uh, most of the fringe elements characterized in the report hate the government more than they do specific races. They hate everyone. So, of course, they're going to lump everybody in this group as well. So it says here that they spent... Uh, undercover this as an FBI informant watching the internal workings of white supremacist groups. So it goes on here and it says that um, the study, SPLC study, came from information compiled from field reports, Patriot publications, the internet, law enforcement sources, and news reports. Uh, they included the state with the most neo-Nazi groups, California 9, kind of surprised by that, the state with the most Ku Klux Klan groups, uh, Texas uh, with 26. The report breaks out a group it calls Christian Identity, which the Southern Law, uh, Law Poverty Center defines as a religion that is fundamentally racist and anti-Semitic. Texas has the most with five. Uh, here we go, another category in the report called General Hate, just, just pure out hate, is defined as groups that are anti-homosexual, Holocaust deniers, racist musicians, or radical traditional Catholics. Those are Catholics that aren't for abortion or contraceptives. So the country needs to do better, says the Zionist. Pope Talk wrote in an editorial, the Department of Homeland Security said needs to act to avoid a repeat of the kind of hate-based violence the nation saw in the 1990s. You know, I just thought about it. It's, it's very, very clear, which is, you know, you don't want to be lumped in with that group to be uh, this uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. You have to see it from their angle, from their view, from their perception, which is they're a minority, and people are starting to wake up that they're a minority that is overrepresented, overrepresented in the economy. I've gone through this. In politics, there are less than 1% Jews, and they make up, what, what was it, around 30, 30% in Congress? And that's, like someone said, that's not including people that changed their names or are kind of uh, 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 Christian Zionists, right? So probably around 40, 50 percent. The heads of the Treasury, the heads of the Federal Reserve, and their slogan is what? Is Israel first. So that's what they see as a threat, people waking up to that reality. But, you know, of course, I'm, I'm could be labeled an anti, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, a racist, a hate monger. Is your local police department using pictures of pregnant women and uh, children for target practice? Yeah, that's right. So this is why people are starting to wake up. They're getting, because they're getting ready, right? They're getting ready. They call it no more hesitation. You don't want to hesitate when you're shooting a little kid or a pregnant woman, right? Or an old man or a young mother. Remember this story, patriotic high school students suspended for cheering USA. This is from February 14th. So California high school students reportedly suspended for wearing American flag printed bandanas and chanting USA at a local basketball team accused of racism. Eighth grader asked to remove U.S. Marines t-shirt or be suspended. Followed by a K-12 student database will share information with private companies selling educational products and services. So uh, everything. Uh, names, addresses, social security number, hobbies, career goals, attitudes towards school and they'll share their profiles with private companies that will sell it. And of course, we know who it's backed by. Bill and Melinda Gates, Carnegie, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp. So I guess you can say it is a battle. Camouflage clad airmen who cause school closing use poor judgment. So it goes on here and it says, schools closed one of their high schools Monday morning out of concern over a man who showed up on campus in camouflage. <laughs> 21 year old airmen from uh, this uh, Selfridge Air National Base had come to his alma mater at about 6 a.m. after work to inquire about a recommendation. According to the Macomb County Sheriff, the airman was draft in, dra uh, dressed in camouflage and was wearing a flak jacket and an empty holster. So 
They said uh, the Harrison Township said the district acted properly in closing the high school while law enforcement and school officials tried to sort out what was going on. So one of the parents said, I don't think it can be too little. So you can never have too much security. So yeah, that's the messed up part is that they say it's a little over top, but at the same time, I'm glad they're paying attention. So that's paying attention, overreacting to every little thing. So they don't want to address society, like I said. They don't want to address the violence. Of course, the government wants a monopoly on violence. They don't want people uh, uh, carrying out violence, especially in, in forms of justice, where they don't have to go to the courts and they handle it themselves. But see, they always have to overreact, so then they can't say, well, you know, if it does happen, oh, so you didn't do enough. We need more security. A fat letter sent to parents of 10-year-old state champion athlete. So it says uh, it was sent a fat letter from the state of Massachusetts warning them their 94-pound 10-year-old uh, son was considered obese. He's a wrest state wrestling champion. I'm wondering if maybe this little database that they have on uh, have on them, maybe they got it wrong, or, or maybe an algorithm, right? Florida uh, Walmart kicks out school children seeing God Bless America to honor 9-11 victims. So... Says the, situ uh, says the situation with the patriotic school kids should have never uh, should have been handled differently. And this was from September of last year. The Obama regime, yes, we can kill Americans on soil. This is Holder. So the, uh, they have the authority to assassinate U.S. citizens abroad in non-war zones. Just got even more disgraceful. Holder sent a letter in response to inquiries from Senator Rand Paul, who uh, bl basically vowed to block the confirmation of uh, John Brennan to the CIA chief position. It is possible, I suppose, to imagine extraordinary, extraordinary circumstances in which it would be necessary and appropriate under, const, under the Constitution and applicable laws of the United States for the President to authorize the military to use lethal force within the mili uh, territory of the United States. So there you go, right? Attorney General Holder responds to Senator Rand Paul's drone inquiry. So Rand Paul's a Zionist. We just saw who he really supports. It's Israel first. So he is the controlled opposition. Pilot reports a drone sighting at JFK Airport. So a black drone. Of course, they say, oh, it's the terrorists. So they had the huge anti-terrorist bureaucracy go to try to handle it, right? Well, the real terrorists are what? Uh, the drones that are killing people in other countries. So they're going to have terrorists uh, basically inspect themselves. The Passover approaching, a plague of locusts descends upon Egypt. So it happens every year. But it says here uh, the, that uh, this year is especially large, the swarm. Anti-APAC protesters in downtown Washington Greek conference delegates sponsored by Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, again, I hate to say this, you know, but uh, I've heard of this too, where they actually have groups within groups. The Zionists have their own groups that uh, are opposing, you know, uh, occupying Palestine and stuff like that. Say, we're Jews against war and stuff. And I'm sure that there's many people that are peaceful, uh, peaceful Jews, right? They don't want war. But like everybody else, they're always just used. So it says here, the Global Advocacy Group billboards reads, APAC does not speak for me. Most Jewish Americans are pro-peace. APAC is not. Eric Holder says some banks are so large that it's difficult for us to prosecute them. He's concerned that the size of some of the institutions becomes so large that it does not become, that it does become difficult for us to prosecute them. So... It says it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps the world economy, and thus national security. Uh, prosecution rests case and trial of accused NYPD cannibal cop. So federal prosecutors have rested their case against a, a city so-called cannibal cop. So it goes on in here and it says the judge says we don't have, well, uh, what we don't have is proof that he ever saw the images. So all kinds of ghastly images, including women being tortured, dead bodies and body parts, and especially scenes relating to cannibalism. But so they dismissed it because they said they could never prove that he saw them. Uh, Yale hosts a workshop teaching sensitivity to bestiality. That's right. From campusreform.org. On Saturday afternoon, Yale hosted a sensitivity training which students were asked to consider topics such as bestiality, incest, and accepting money for sex. The goal is to teach students not to automatically judge people who may have engaged in these sorts of activities, but rather to respond with understanding and compassion. Called it sexual diversity, so we know where it's coming from. Toronto School Board web link offers kinksy, kinky sex advice to children. It says here that uh, the Toronto School Board District website entices children to experiment sexually with vegetables, including how to masturbate and basically promoting homosexuality. Thousands of under-18s are sexually abusing children every year. The acts were committed by children as young as five. They said incident material online has contributed to the rise. 
says in one, a girl was gagged, bound, and beaten up as he attempted to reenact scenes he had seen on the internet. Or kind of like the S&M video by Rihanna, who's flaunting her new G-string. Thank you.